I rise today to honor the life of former U.S. Senator Herb Cole. Herb was a successful businessman, a generous philanthropist, a dedicated public servant, and my role model. He was a model boss, public servant, and senator, always putting people first. But if you knew Herb, you knew how humble he was. In fact, after he was uh, first sworn in, uh, one of the colleagues that he respected in this body said to him, you're going to be a model senator. I've heard him tell this story a number of times. He decided to look up the definition of the word model, and he quipped back by saying, model, my friends, is a small replica of the real thing, making light of his rather modest stature and deflecting credit for his leadership. That scenario embodies a lot of who Herb was. He was modest, funny, and at his core, an unrelenting advocate for the people of the state of Wisconsin. Senator Cole served in this body for 24 years, but served the people of Wisconsin and our country throughout his entire life. In the Senate, he didn't care how long the fight would take, how long the odds were, or who he was up against. If it would help the people of Wisconsin, it was worthy of uh, him to engage in that fight. His mantra, mantra throughout his service was, nobody's senator but yours. And his record in Washington reflected that commitment to a T. In Congress, he worked quietly, diligently, and with focus. Her fought to get Wisconsin dairy farmers fair prices for their products and worked to invest in and save Wisconsin's family farms. He championed vital food assistant programs that children and working families rely on and worked to expand access to affordable child care, elder care, and health care for millions of Americans. Herb knew that taking care of our great outdoors and our environment was key not only to our Wisconsin way of life, but also to our economy. Working with both environmentalists and business interests, Herb secured resources to clean up drinking water sources and combat invasive species and pollution in our Great Lakes. And he championed initiatives to help workers get the skills they needed to be competitive in today's economy and keep Wisconsin manufacturing jobs in Wisconsin. Senator Cole was never afraid to stand up to special interests on behalf of his constituents. He diligently led oversight of mergers and acquisitions to protect competition and consumers in everything from agriculture to rail to telecommunications to health care, working with Democrats and Republicans to lower the everyday cost of essentials like prescri prescription drugs and gasoline. At the end of the day, it was always about the people of Wisconsin. That is why it should come as no surprise that his office was widely regarded as the best constituent service shop in Congress. As he said in his farewell to the Senate in 2012, every Wisconsinite had an ally and an advocate in his Senate office. Whether it be getting a veteran their health care benefits, helping a senior navigate Medicare, or getting a family their passports in time for a vacation, the coal office was always there. It is not the stuff that makes headlines, but it makes a difference for people. So Herb was invested in it. While Senator Cole actively avoided taking credit for his work, his colleagues knew that behind his measured and unassuming demeanor was an industrious work ethic, a ready sense of humor, and a fierce commitment to doing what was right for Wisconsin. 
As my predecessor in the Senate, I could not ask, have asked for a better role model. Coming into this chamber can be daunting, especially when trying to fill the shoes of someone with such a distinguished record and reputation. But luckily for me, Senator Cole's steadfast support and mentorship began well before he escorted me into this very chamber. Throughout the years, Senator Cole and his con has been a constant source of wisdom and encouragement. He was generous with his resources, his knowledge, his time, and his heart. Any Wisconsinite who had the pleasure of meeting Herb knew this overwhelming spirit of generosity permeated everything that he did. A product of Milwaukee Public Schools himself, Herb truly believed that investing in the next generation of engaged citizens was the bedrock of our democracy. And since 1990, his foundation has invested millions of dollars in scholarships and fellowships to help Wisconsin students pursue higher education and allow teachers to better meet the needs of their classrooms. I know Wisconsin teachers and students will remember Herb as a friend to education. Whether you ran into him at a bas basketball game or at Ma Fisher's in Milwaukee or visited his Washington, D.C. office, Herb always had the time to say hello and take a picture. No matter his fame or fortune, Herb was truly a man of the people. And of course, it's hard to talk about Herb Cole without mentioning his beloved Milwaukee Bucks. In fact, it was hard to talk to Senator Cole without talking about the Milwaukee Bucks. As the longtime owner of the team, Senator Cole fought on more than one occasion to keep the Bucks in Milwaukee, recognizing the immense value of the franchise to the state of Wisconsin and to the city that he loved in large part because of his determination and generosity, Herb was able to watch Milwaukee bring home a national championship in 2021 for the first time in 50 years. Now, while Herb is no longer with us, I know his legacy will live on for years to come. In every young fan who attends a Bucks game, and every student who jumps around at the Cole Center while cheering on Badger basketball in Madison, his impact will be felt by the thousands of students who will continue to benefit from his philanthropic efforts and the Wisconsin families who have food on the table and access to affordable health care thanks to his tireless advocacy. And I hope his legacy of service lives on in me and in all those called to serve the communities they love. Though Herb Cole may have had the reputation as a common man, his legacy is anything but ordinary. From humble roots as the son of immigrants in Milwaukee, Herb's immense success in business and public life and philanthropy personified the American dream made reality through a Wisconsin work ethic and unwavering commitment to doing right by his neighbors. There is truly no one like Senator Herb Cole, and Wisconsin is so lucky to have had him fighting in our corner. Herb's record of achievement and commitment to Wisconsin is undeniable. While he may not like to be called it, it is the truth. Herb was a model senator and my role model. Thank you, Herb, for your service to Wisconsin. You will be dearly, dearly missed. Madam President. Senator from Minnesota. Madam President, I would like to thank our colleague from uh, Wisconsin for her beautiful words 
her heartfelt memories. And mostly, I know personally how proud Senator Cole was uh, that you, uh, Senator Baldwin, um, got elected and serve, and serve your state so well. Uh, you're truly a tribute to your state, but also um, to Herb's memory. So um, I'm here as the neighbor, uh, the senator next door, uh, the one that got to know Herb Cole because Minnesota and Wisconsin, despite our rivalries, as the presiding officer knows when it comes to the Vikings and the Packers and the Badgers and the Gophers, actually has a lot more in common uh, than we do that uh, divides us. And in fact, um, my mom grew up in Milwaukee. I talked to her many times. She also was the daughter of immigrant parents. Um, in her case, her uh, dad uh, worked at Porth Pie Shop, which Herb was aware of, um, and uh, came from humble roots. So Senator Cole's life was really as American as they come. He was born, as we noted, uh, in Milwaukee to immigrant parents. He learned the value of hard work as Senator Baldwin discussed as a bag boy at his dad's market. He attended public high school and the University of Wisconsin before earning his MBA. From there, he and his brother worked to build their family's business into an iconic department store chain, chain Kohl's, of course. And I can't tell you how many times Visiting my grandma in Milwaukee, it'd be like, we can get that at Kohl's. We can go to Kohl's. They were so proud of the work that he did. And later, when his beloved Milwaukee Bucks almost left Wisconsin, it was Herb who bought the team just so he could keep them there. I know that Senator Baldwin is proud of the Bucks' 2021 uh, final win, and we all know it would never have been the Milwaukee Bucks without Herb Cole. After working his way up from the bag boy to the basketball team owner, Herb didn't have to seek public office, but he loved his state and its people too much to rest on his laurels. To him, running for office was not in any way a path to personal gain. It was a moral obligation. After winning election to the Senate in 1988, Herb got to work right away for the people of Wisconsin. And as Senator Baldwin noted, he worked to expand the supply of affordable housing for elderly Americans, crack down on corporate espionage, expand safe and affordable child care, secure critical medical training investments in the Affordable Care Act, and how proud I know he was of Senator Baldwin's, then Representative Baldwin's, important role in making sure uh, that older kids were able to be covered under their parents' Uh, policies under the Affordable Care Act. But he took as much pride in making sure of those big things as how a single dairy farmer could stay afloat in a low producing season. On a personal note, I was lucky to call her a mentor and a friend. We worked together uh, during my early years in the Senate, including on ending 30 years of delay so that the construction of the St. Croix River Bridge between Minnesota and Wisconsin could move forward. Uh, Senator Baldwin and I were there for the completion of that historic bridge, what we consider one of the most beautiful bridges in our state, maybe the most beautiful bridge, but I can never say that. Um, and Herb was there from the beginning on that project. Um, when Herb cared about something, he would work to get it done. And he would work, as Senator Baldwin has said, in a humble way. He was never one to seek the spotlight, and in a chamber full of egos and big speeches, that certainly made him stand out. I remember that even though he was a multimillionaire, he always used to eat his lunch in the cafeteria, often buying lunch for staffers that he encountered in line. Uh, one time, he brought me to eat there because I was taking over from him as a head of the antitrust subcommittee. And he gave me advice from a business perspective, which people don't always think of antitrust in that way, but Herb Cole was a true entrepreneur. He was a competitor. He believed that competition was a big part of capitalism, and that's why he cherished his work on that subcommittee and gave me all kinds of advice about how to talk about it in a way that from the very beginning of America's roots and our economy, um, from the founding fathers on, competition was what made us successful. And he certainly believed that 
when he built that department store chain up and didn't just kowtow to whoever was there from the beginning. So that really dictated a lot of how I thought about antitrust. He also told me to hire his staff, like Caroline, and gave me such good advice on doing that. Um, and I think it was also a great example of Herb Cole because he was looking out for his staff, not just while he was in the Senate, but long after he left. He didn't have to do any of that. There is no rule in the Senate that subcommittee chairs have to impart their wisdom in a formal lunch in the Senate cafeteria, maybe not that formal, uh, to the next generation. And there is no rule that senators have to keep looking out for their staff years and years after they retire. But that's just who Herb was. He embodied Midwestern compassion, generous with his spirit, generous with his time, and generous with his resources. He spent his early career working hard to build wealth, and he spent the rest of his life using it to make a difference in the world. As a product of the public schools, he knew firsthand that a quality education was a pathway to success. And that's why he made it his mission later in life to give back to invest in public education. Advocating for breakfast and lunch for low-income students, championing Wisconsin's Teacher of the Year program, and on multiple occasions paid for entire slates of teachers back to supply, back to school supply wish lists something that deeply resonated with me, as my mom would always complain about having to buy her own supplies for her classroom as a second grade teacher because she wanted them to have the best. Today, thanks to his charitable giving, scholarships, and educational foundation, and even the Wisconsin, I must acknowledge, Badgers, hockey and basketball arena, they bear his name. Herb's philanthropy was motivated not by glory, but by an unwavering devotion to his state. So I'll end with this. I think what best captures Herb may have been that slogan when he first ran for Senate. And it was this, nobody's senator but yours. In a field where what is noble is often sacrificed for what is expedient, that might seem naive or unrealistic. Not for Herb. Throughout his 24 years in the Senate, he never broke that promise. And anyone who has driven from Stillwater, Minnesota, over to the Wisconsin side of the St. Croix River, they can thank Herb Cole. And anyone who went to school on a Cole Student Excellence Scholarship can thank him. And anyone who has roots for the Milwaukee, who roots for the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, which once upon a time almost became the Minnesota Bucks, but we're not gonna go into that story because we have our own team now that's doing pretty well. No, don't, this is not the time to do that. We can thank Herb Cole. Um, the Senate is better off, the state of Wisconsin is better off because of Herb and certainly our country is better off. My thoughts are with his friends, his family, his former staff, and of course, the intrepid and wonderful Senator Baldwin. And again, he couldn't be prouder that you got elected Senator Baldwin. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor. Madam President. The Senator from Oregon. Madam President, uh, Wisconsin has lost a great man. When I came to the Senate in 2009, I made it an effort to sit down with, with each member. And of the 100 members, the quietest individual the most soft-spoken was Herb Cole. He sat behind his desk. We talked about the family farms, and particularly the dairies of Wisconsin. We talked a little bit about basketball, Oregon Trailblazers, and the Milwaukee Bucks, and of course, the pride that we had when the Blazers won a championship back in the 1970s. But really, it was just a comfortable get to know you, and yet I knew the man across the desk from me had been so powerfully successful in business and in politics. But unlike in virtually any other conversation here in the Senate, he didn't lay claim to a, a single accomplishment or talk about the great glories of his career. It was just a welcome to the Senate. Here you can help families out. And that spirit 
really fits with what we've heard from Senator Baldwin about his legacy. A man who was humble, who was generous, who was disciplined, who was hard working. A man who worked not just on agriculture, but on housing, but on public education, but on cleaning up the Great Lakes and many other things that my colleagues have mentioned. When he was pondering retiring, he talked about the individual that he hoped would follow in his footsteps and his spirit here in the Senate, our own Senator Tammy Baldwin. And it was almost a family connection, a powerful heart-to-heart -heart connection. And so one of the most important legacies that he has left is continuing his vision of fighting for ordinary families, ordinary people here in the Senate with the woman who took his place. Herb Cole was modest in style, but powerfully effective in practice. We miss him here in the Senate, and we know that the people of Wisconsin benefited enormously from his life and also miss him greatly in his passing. Thank you. Madam President, I rise today with my Senator colleagues. Senator from Oregon. I rise today with my colleagues to pay tribute to a special friend and our former colleague, Senator Cole of Wisconsin. I was fortunate enough to be able to serve with Herb Cole during his service in the Senate and have been equally fortunate to know his wonderful family. And I've been listening to my colleagues describe Senator Cole, and I thought that I would describe him in a way that Herb Cole would never uh, describe himself as being. That's because he was too modest. But the fact is, Herb Cole was really the embodiment of what we Jews know as tikkun alum, which is a belief that all of us have a responsibility to leave our world and our communities better off than we found them. Herb did that day in and day out, living his life, always trying to boost the well-being of those less fortunate. As my colleagues have been saying, Herb Cole didn't need to go into public service. But what we're all saying today is public service desperately needs people like Herb Cole, successful business person, passionate about improving his home state of Wisconsin and his country through public service. Now, when most people think of a United States senator, my guess is they have an image of somebody who loves to hear themselves talk puts out a blizzard of news releases, tweets every day, aims to take credit for lots of stuff. Herb Cole was just the opposite of all that. And for example, at home in Oregon, I always make a point of it going to boys and girls clubs to shoot baskets with the kids in the summer. And again and again, I would encounter young people around lunchtime who came to Camp Ravenous and got two lunches right away. They weren't just hungry. They had had nothing to eat but a candy bar since the day before. Local boys and girls clubs help kids get substantial, nourishing meals, and they're always trying to find ways to get extra food to kids in need, particularly as the week comes to a close. And many kids are facing a weekend in the summer, not knowing where their next meal would come from. Madam President, and I assume my colleagues know this, it wasn't until years after I'd been going to shoot hoops in the summer with the Boys and Girls Club, it wasn't for years that I found out that Herb Cole, our Herb Cole, was given generous support to those Boys and Girls Clubs for years. But did he say a word about it? to my colleagues, to me. We talk basketball all the time. 
but he never talked about how he stepped in to help all those future hoopster, hoopsters. And that was Herb Cole in a nutshell. He would see a need for his community, and without any fanfare, without any notice, without any press releases, Herb Cole didn't act like a senator. He just acted in the spirit of Tikkun Olam. He stepped up. He wanted to help. Never asked for an award. Never saw himself with a picture of himself in a blue suit and a red tie getting some kind of award. Now, a number of senators over the years, and I think this echoes what my colleagues have said, they said that Herb was very nice to them and very polite. I heard Senator Klobuchar talking about working on antitrust stuff. But a lot of colleagues would come up to you and they would say, our first name, they'd say, but I haven't really had a lot of extended conversations with Senator Cole. Now we know it was not because he was unpleasant or wished somebody ill, but because he was very uh, private, putting in the work each day to make good on his pledges to Wisconsin families and so many others. And all of us read the really wonderful, gracious obituary to Senator Cole in the, in the New York uh, Times. One of the reasons I wanted to come to the floor today was to mention a couple of things that they didn't even manage to get into that wonderful obituary. It was terrific. But let me give some examples. Now, my background is working with the Gray Panthers, working with the elderly. I was thrilled to be able to work under him as chair, when he was chair of the aging committee. When it came to seniors, no issue for Senator Cole was too small or too insignificant for him to tackle. He tackled end of life issues and long term care, addressing unemployment among older workers, protecting uh, seniors from financial abuse, tried to help them save for retirement. All of us could go through this laundry list of accomplishments. Not all of those ideas might have been on the front page of the paper, but they represented the quiet and thoughtful workhorse that Herb Cole was. was. Older Americans had no better ally than they did in Senator uh, Cole. And through all the partisan infighting, he always worked on those senior issues because he saw that as ground that was exempt from all the pettiness that drives so much of politics. And I'll close with this. I was especially appreciative that Senator Cole, in his quiet way, had the vision to look down the road at big challenges. And for example, he talked to me often, and I'm sure my colleagues as well, about how the guarantee of Medicare had evolved over the years. In other words, Senator Cole knew Medicare was not a voucher, wasn't some piece of paper, some snippet of paper, or something It was a guarantee of Medicare. He also knew that it had evolved over the years. It's still continuing with the prescription drug benefit. He knew the program inside out. And Senator Cole would always say to me, let's just keep figuring out how to update the Medicare guarantee, protect the elderly, and promote uh, choice and alternatives without compromising the protections that older people deserve. And let me just say to my colleagues as chair of the Finance Committee, if you walk into the Senate Finance Committee room today and you talk about the issues relating to Medicare and Medicare Advantage and them spending $6 billion on garbage advertising, Herb Cole was telling us years ago there were supposed to be guardrails for that. There were supposed to be protections for that. And that was Herb Cole thinking down the road as well as helping uh, people uh, today. So I'm really pleased to be here with my uh, good friends. And I'll just close with one last stop point. I think one of my colleagues talked about it. Senator Klobuchar knew that the Senate was kind of a community and I suspect that there are a few people in the House uh, today who understand that as well. But when staff was working late at night, 
They might have a bill or amendment or something, or maybe they'd be working on a project where staff was kind of helping the sort of bigger campus community. And it would get to be eight or nine o'clock at night, and people were kind of hoping that somehow out of the sky a pizza would arrive. Not with Herb Cole. When it got to be nine o'clock, we got ourselves a real dinner. And nobody knew where it came from, but a handful of us did. So until his last days, Herb Cole practiced Takoon alum. And that's why you have some of my most thoughtful colleagues. The Senate's made up of a lot of people. But I've just been here a few minutes, and I heard Senator Baldwin, Senator Klobuchar, my partner from Oregon, Senator Merkley. These are the kind of people who also represent the best of public service. And that's why all of us are here, because our hearts are heavy today, because we so admired him, we so appreciate him. I send my love tonight to Sid and Dorothy and Lisa and the whole family, because they continue to represent the ideals Herb Cole stood for. And with that, Madam uh, President, I yield the floor.